I've always been a really creative person. Ever since I was a kid, I was always writing, painting, drawing, and just creating something. But one of the challenges that I faced when starting to learn digital design and photography was trying to utilize proper composition in order to have that strong visual impact I was looking for. I'm positive I'm not alone in that, right? Right? Hey there, everyone. My name is Danielle Rochford. I am an educator and creative entrepreneur. And today I'm going to be sharing with you six techniques to up your game where visual composition is concerned. Plus, if you stick around until the very end of the video here today, I've got a sweet bonus for you. So be sure to do that. Stick around to the very end. But before we jump into all of that content, don't forget that liking this video, commenting on it, and subscribing to my channel helps to keep this content coming. So take a few moments to do that. Make sure you subscribe, like, comment. I'll wait for you. Go ahead. I'll wait. Oh, you back? All right, awesome. Did you know that it is possible to have all of the most appealing elements ever, but when you put them together, if you don't put them together in the proper way using good composition rules, it can kind of fall flat sometimes. So that's why knowing these different t techniques that I'm gonna be sharing with you today is so vital. Composition is important. And not only is it important, but it's actually something that a lot of people struggle with, especially when they're first getting going in their journey being a creative. So what is this composition thing that we're all talking about here today? That really is the golden question, isn't it? Well, you know, if you have some ideas, I want you to comment below. Tell me what it is you think this composition thing is all about. So in very simple terms, when we're talking about composition, we're talking about taking single elements and putting them together to create one cohesive image. So all of your fonts and images and colors, all of it is coming together to make one whole complete design. So, and if this is done properly, and we put everything together just the right way, not only is it going to look fantastic, but um, it's also going to be highly effective and functional. So the question is, how is it that we can make sure that we are consistently creating these strong compositions? Well, see, that's where my six tips come in today. Let's take a look at what they are. So number one is focus. A key part of any well done composition is going to have a strong focal point. You need a place that is going to draw the eye of your viewer because no matter what it is that you're doing, what it is that you're designing and creating, you're telling a story, a visual story. And having a strong focal point makes sure that your story gets told in the most effective way possible. Number two is balance. When we have multiple items that are part of our design, we always need to make sure that they are balanced in some way. Now, we do have two main types of balance that we take a look at. The first is symmetrical balance. Symmetrical balance means that you're designing with symmetry. Okay, so think of a mirror image. The other type of balance that we have is asymmetrical balance. Now, asymmetrical balance is just the opposite of symmetrical balance. So we don't have the mirror image going on. We are balancing without using symmetry. Number three, complementary elements. I'm sure you've heard of complementary colors before, but that kind of begs the question, what are these complementary elements? Maybe you aren't as familiar with that term. The idea here is that you're using different elements that work well together. So you are being purposeful with your design. Some examples of where we can see these complementary elements would be things like using photos from the same photo shoot 
or maybe applying the same filter to all of your images. Or it could even be something like pairing fonts with your images and the rest of your designs that follow the same theme. So for example, if you're trying to get across the idea of something sophisticated or something vintage, you would choose fonts and graphics that go together to convey that same message. Number four, repetition. A really good idea to use is this idea of repetition to really help tie things together. It, it helps to maintain a consistency through your design. And it also helps to provide a strong, cohesive feel to things. Technique number five is white space. Here is one of the things that I find that most beginner designers do. They want to fill up the space with everything. My friend, white space is there for you to use or not use as the case may be because it is not mandatory to cover all the space in your design. Actually, it can be more effective not to and to utilize that white space. Some of the different ways that we can utilize this is taking our graphics and scaling them down so that they're not filling up the whole space that we're designing. But I find that the most effective way of sort of trimming things down and providing some white space for yourself is to ask this question. Is this 100% absolutely necessary? If the answer is no, take it out. And finally, technique number six, the rule of thirds. Now this is a technique that you will see in a number of different places, photography, drawing, painting, lots of different areas where you'll see this rule of composition. The rule of thirds is a technique where you take your scene and you divide it into a grid. Um, and it's a three by three grid. And this helps you to be able to position key items in your design in certain areas that are very strong focally. So for example, where those lines intersect, those are strong focal points. And that's where you will want to position some of your key elements. Now, of course, this list of six techniques is by no means comprehensive. There are a number of different techniques that you can utilize to make sure that you have very strong visual design. But these six are some primary ones that you can use to get going and start up in your game where composition is concerned. Now I want you to hit that like button if you're ready to start experimenting with some of these different techniques. And then I want you to comment below and tell me which one you're going to experiment with first. And you know, while you're down there, don't forget, there's that subscribe button. Hit that so that you can have content delivered right to you as soon as it gets uploaded. Thank you so much for sticking around to the end. And like I promised at the beginning of the video, I have an awesome bonus just for you. I have created an infographic that outlines these six techniques that I have provided for you today. Now, you know what I said to myself, I have to do something more for my viewers. So I didn't just leave it at those six. I've also included four bonus techniques just for you. You can find the link to the infographic in the description below. Go ahead and find it there, click it and claim that infographic for yourself. Well, everyone, I hope that you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. We'll see you in the next one.